So we're continuing with the story of the King's Ankus. This is not one that I remember having read before, but the story is that Ka was shown some things by a white cobra under the city that the monkeys live in. And the cobra told him that men would pay with their lives to see what he was showing. So Ka decides to take Mowgli to this city where he meets the white cobra who was set there generations ago to guard the king's treasure under the stone. The stone has only moved five times. It was always to put more treasure in, never to take any away. And this was so long ago that Ka and Mowgli have no idea what king this cobra is talking about. But we will continue from that point. There is no city. Look up. Yonder are roots of the great trees tearing the stones apart. Trees and men do not grow together. Ka insisted. Twice and thrice have men found their way here, the white cobra answered savagely. But they never spoke till I came upon them groping in the dark. With, And then they cried only a little time. But ye come with lies, man and snake both and would have me believe the city is not, and that my wardship ends. Little do men change in the years, but I change never, till the stone is lifted and the Brahmins come down singing the songs that I know, and feed me with warm milk, and take me to the light again. I, 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 and no other am warden of the king's treasure. The city is dead, ye say, and here are the roots of the trees. Stoop down, then, and take what ye will. Earth has no treasure like these, man with the snake's tongue, if thou canst go alive by the way that thou hast entered at the lesser of at the lesser kings will be thy servants. Again the trail is lost, said Mowgli coolly. Can any jackal have burrowed so deep and bitten this great white hood? He is surely mad, father of cobras, I see nothing here to take away. By the gods of the sun and the moon, it is madness of death upon the boy. It is the madness of death upon the boy, hissed the cobra. Before thine eyes close, I will allow thee this favor. Look thou and see what man has never seen before. They do not, they do not well in the jungle who speak to Mowgli of favors, said the boy between his teeth. But the dark changes all. As I know, I will look if that please thee. He stared with puckered up eyes round to the vault, and then lifted up from the floor a handful of something that glittered. Oh ho, said he, this is like the stuff they play with in the man pack, only this is yellow and the other was brown. He let the gold pieces fall and moved forward. The floor of the vault of the vault was buried some five or six feet deep in coined gold and silver that had burst from the sacks of that had burst from the sacks it had been originally stored in, and in the long years the metal had packed and settled as sand packs at low tide. <clears throat> On it, and in it, and rising through it, as wrecks lift through the sand, were jeweled elephant howdahs of embroidered silver, studded with plates of hammered gold and adorned with carbuncles and turquoises. There were palanquins and litters for carrying queens, framed and braced with silver and enamel, with jade-handled poles and amber curtain rings. There were gold candlesticks hung with pierced emeralds that quivered on the branches. There were studded images, five feet high, of forgotten gods, silver with jeweled eyes. And there were coats of mail, gold inlaid on steel and fringed with rotted and blackened seed pearls. There were helmets crested and beaded with pigeon's blood. Rubies, there were she rubies, there were shields, of lacquer, of tortoise shell, of rhinoceros hide, strapped and bossed with red gold, and set with emeralds at the edge. There were sheaves of diamond-hilted swords, daggers, and hunting knives. There were golden sacrificial bowls and ladles and portable altars of the shape that never sees the light of day. There were jade cups and bracelets. There were incense burners, combs, and pots for perfume, henna, and eye powder, all in embroidered gold. There were nose rings, armlets, headbands, finger rings, and girdles past any counting. There were belts, seven fingers broad, of square-cut diamonds and rubies, and wooden boxes, trebly clamped with iron, from which the wood had fallen away in powder, showing the pile of uncut star sapphires, opals, cat's eyes, sapphires, rubies, diamonds, emeralds, and garnets within. 
the white cobra was right. No more money would begin to pay, no mere money would begin to pay the value of this treasure, the sifted pickings of centuries of war, plunder, trade, and taxation. The coins alone were priceless, leaving out of count all the precious stones and the dead weight of the gold and silver among the might of t alone might be two or three hundred tons. Every native ruler in India today, however poor, has a hoard of which he is always to which he is always adding. And though once in a great while, while some enlightened prince may send off forty or fifty bullock cartloads of silver to be exchanged for government securities, the bulk of them keep their treasure and the knowledge of it very closely to themselves. But Mowgli naturally did not understand what these things meant. The knives interested him a little, but they did not balance so well as his own, and so he dropped them. At last he found something really fascinating laid in fr on the front of a howdah, half buried in the coins. It was a three-foot ankus, or elephant, or elephant goad, something like a small boat hook. The top was one round shining ruby, and eight inches of the handle below it were studded with rough turquoises close together, giving a most satisfactory grip. Below them was a rim of jade, with a flower pattern running round it. Only the leaves were emeralds, and the blossoms were rubies sunk in the coal in the cool green stone. The rest of the handle was a shaft of pure ivory, while the point, the spike, and the hook was gold inlaid steel with pictures of elephants of elephant catching, and the pictures attracted Mowgli, who saw they had something to do with his friend Hati the Silent. The white cobra had been following him closely. Is it not worth dying to behold, he said? Have I not done thee a great favor? I do not understand, said Mowgli. Things are hard and cold, and by no means good to eat, but this, he lifted the Ancus, I desire to take away, that I may see it in the sun. Thou sayest they are all thine? Wilt thou give it to me, and I will bring thee frogs to eat? The white cobra fairly shook with evil delight. Assuredly I will give it, he said. All that is here I will give thee, till thou goest away. But I go now. This place is dark and cold, and I wish to take the thorn-pointed thing to the jungle. Look by thy foot. What is that there? Mowgli picked up something white and smooth. It is the bone of a man's head, he said quietly, and here are two more. They came to take the treasure away many years ago. I spoke to them in the dark, and they lay still. But what do I need of this that is called treasure? If thou wilt give me the Ancus to take away, it is good hunting. If not, it is good hunting nonetheless. I do not fight with the poison people, and I was also taught the master word of thy tribe. There is but one master word here. It is mine. Ka flung himself forward with blazing eyes. Who bade me bring the man? he hissed. I surely, the old cobra lisped. It is long since I have seen man, and this man speaks our tongue. But there was no talk of his killing. How can I go to the jungle and say that I have led him to his death, said Ka. I talk not of killing till the time, and as thy going or not going, there is the hole in the wall. And as to thy going or not going, there is a hole in the wall. Peace now, thou fat monkey killer. I have but to touch thy neck, and the jungle will know thee no longer. Never man came here and went away with the breath under his ribs. I am the warden of the treasure of the king's city. But thou white worm of the dark, I tell thee there is neither king nor city. The jungle is all about us, cried Ka. There is still the treasure, but this can be done. Wait a while, carve the rocks, and see the boy run. There is room for great sport here. Life is good. Run to and fro a while and make sport, boy. Mowgli put his hand on Ka's head quietly. The white thing has dealt with men of the man pack until now. He does not know me, he whispered. He has asked for this hunting. Let him have it. Mowgli had been standing with the Ancus, held point down, he flung it from him quickly and dropped crossways just behind the great snake's hood. 
pinning him to the floor, in a flash caused weight was upon the writhing body, paralyzing it from head to tail. The red eyes burned, and the six spare inches of the head struck furiously right and left. Kill, said Ka, as Mowgli's hand went to his knife. No, he said as he drew the blade. I will never kill again save for food. But look you, Ka, he caught the snake behind the hood, forced the mouth open with the blade of his knife, and showed the terrible full poison fangs of the upper jaw lying black and withered in the gum. The white cobra had outlived his poison as a snake will. Sue, it is dried up, said Mowgli, and motioned Ka away. He picked up the Ankus, setting the white cobra free. The king's treasure needs a new warden, he said gravely. Thou hast not done well. Run t to and thro, and make sport, Thu. I am ashamed. Kill me, hissed the white cobra. There has been too much talk of killing. We will go now. I take the thorn-pointed thing, Thu, because I have fought and worsted thee. See that the thing does not kill thee at last. It is death. Remember, it is death. There is enough in that thing to kill the men in all my city. Lo not long wilt thou hold it, jungle man, nor he who takes it from thee. They will kill and kill and kill for its sake. My strength is dried up, but the Ankus will do my work. It is death, it is death, it is death. Mowgli crawled out through the hole into the passage again. And the last that he saw was the white cobra striking furiously with his harmless fangs the solid golden faces of the gods on the floor and hissing, It is death! They were glad to get to the light of day once more, and when they were back on their own, and when they were back in their own jungle, and Mowgli had made the Ankus glitter in the morning light, he was almost pleased as though he had found a bunch of new flowers to stick in his hair. This is brighter than Bagheera's eyes, he said delightedly as he twirled the ruby. I will show it to him. But what did Thu mean when he talked of death? I cannot say. I am sorrowful to my tail's tale that he f felt not thy knife. There is always evil at cold lairs, above ground and below. But now I am hungry. Dost thou hunt with me this dawn? said Ka. No, Bagheera must see this thing. Good hunting. Mowgli danced off, flourishing the great Ankus, and stopping from time to time to admire it, till he came to that part of the jungle Bagheera chiefly used, and found him drinking after a heavy kill. Mowgli told him all his adventures from beginning to end, and Bagheera sniffed at the Ankus between whiles. When, Mowgli's when Mowgli came to the white cobra's last words, the panther purred approvingly. Then the white hood spoke the thing which I spoke the thing which is, Mowgli asked quickly. I was born in the king's cages at Udaipur, and it is in my stomach that I know some of some little of man. Very many men would kill thrice in a night for the sake of that one big stone alone. But the stone makes it heavy in the hand. My little bright knife is better. And see, the red stone is not good to eat. Then why would they kill? Mowgli, go thou and sleep. Thou hast lived among men and... I remember. Men kill because they are not hunting for idleness and pleasure. Wake up again, Bagheera. For what use was this thorn-pointed thing made? Bagheera half opened his eyes. He was very sleepy, with a malicious twinkle. It was made by men to thrust into the head of the sons of Hati, so that the blood should pour out. I have seen the like in the streets of Udaipur, before our cages. That thing has tasted blood of many such as Hati. And we will pause there.